Oh me, oh my, oh Swissmas. Uh, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of I Don't Give a Flick. I'm your host as always, Johnny Blackburn, and alongside me is none other than... The indefatigable Gary Elmore. Wow. Yep. You really think a uh, lot of yourself. I, I do. You, re- you have a <laughs> yeah. very high opinion of yourself. Very, very high. <laughs> I have a high opinion of myself too. I, I shouldn't, know. but I do. <clears throat> I know that, Johnny. <laughs> Uh, we're, uh, we're, we're lucky to be, uh, welcoming back, uh, also our, our largest panel that we've had to date. Yes. We are now, we just beat the record. We did. We had four in our last episode. Now we're at five. So we're going to see how this goes with everybody attempting not to talk over each other, but it's going to happen. Yep. Either way. Um, first we're going to welcome back, uh, a screenwriter and a local film producer. Also one of the producers here at Lead Feather Productions with Gary and myself, Neil Riley. Neil, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I also have a high opinion of myself, but yet I still have a low opinion of the... Okay, okay. I, I, I <laughs> agree you. with that. Yeah. I, I appreciate your brutal honesty. That's what makes me love you more than our next person we're inviting back for some reason, Jacob Johnson. Jacob, uh, welcome back. Great to be here, Johnny. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I'm really, really happy to hear Love it. Love you. Love, love everything about love you. Love your voice. Love in your face. Love in your face. Love in your face. Uh, Jacob is also host of the uh, film podcast Reese and Jacob versus Evil. And once again, we're happy to welcome back uh, Ian Webb, uh, host of the podcast Movies So Bad They're Good, and the ever increasing popularity Facebook group Movies So Bad They're Good, Midnight Cult Classics, and Camp. Ian, welcome back. Hey, hey. Perfect. Uh, so this week on I Don't Give a Flick, uh, we thought it would be a lot of fun to. I guess we're kind of jumping the gun. I know mm-hmm. that we typically want to save these types of movies for the month of October right. or the weeks leading into October. But, uh, you know, there's just so many damn good films that revolve around uh, the paranormal right. and the terrifying and the shocking that we're just going to go into it. Today, our topic is movies that terrify you to your very core. Bum, bum, bum. Now, let me let me be clear. Uh, this doesn't necessarily have to be a horror film. It doesn't necessarily have to be a psychological thriller. It can be something uh, that you're scared about uh, the future of our country or society mm-hmm. happening to. Uh, it can be... It can be a genocide in another country. It can be uh, a movie about somebody getting kidnapped. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to discuss all of those films here over the next hour. Um, so I, I guess to start out, I'm really I'm really interested. And Ian, we'll start with you since uh, since we're welcoming you back. You were on our last episode um, for a terrifying for a really scary, you know, gut-wrenching film what do you look for what what type of subgenre or just genre in general really strikes you the most that kind of leaves you with you know leaving your bathroom light on at night or it gives you the the it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up oh man that's a good question uh what what i prefer genuinely is existential horror okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> like, you, you know, where the character doesn't know w- what's real. Good. Okay, good. Yeah. You, you know, what's reality and what's, and, and what's not. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. that one always fucks, that definitely it always fucks with my psyche for yeah. sure. You know, um, and I go through that on a daily basis. Yeah. It's very, t- very right. tender, <laughs> <laughs> very tender psyche. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so Jacob, same question to you. Um, what, what genre or subgenre kind of strikes you the most when it comes to terrifying the wits out of you oh horror of course okay. uh usually it's like the fear of the unknown the fear of uh the incalculable i guess you could say uh the deep like as a kid jaws would always scare me but it wasn't like because of sharks it was just that fear of what i don't know is underneath my feet or um slowly approaching me without me even knowing about it uh so even like today like cosmic horror i absolutely love because it's that fear it kind of goes back to what he was saying about existential fear, uh, about being sort of an ant compared to all these other living gods and beings that just are literally have no care for your existence whatsoever. That kind of stuff is always kind of terrifying in my eyes. Um, while uh, we'll get into what truly terrified me in the past few years, but I think currently it's cosmic horror. Okay, Inter- interesting. Co- cosmic horror. Yeah I, I, yeah, I totally forgot that was a sh- subgenre. Um, would would you consider would you consider something like Event Horizon, which we kind of briefly went over in our last post, to be in that subgenre? Just out of curiosity. Oh, for yeah. sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Neil, what about you? 
Uh, for me, I've always been a big fan of the psychological horror mm -hmm. thriller. Oh, um, yeah. The fear of the unknown, you know, not knowing what's in the shadows, if you're being watched, things along that line. That's probably what, to me, frightens me the yeah, most. Keeps you up at night. In, in a, yeah. You know, a good movie. I had to drop the lights. And I'm like, oh shit, what's in the corner over there? <laughs> oh, no, it's just here. You know, that's that's what I like. Oh, it's just my dog. It's just my oh, wife. Oh, okay. Or a chair. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? Oh god, it's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> that's the old ball and chain. <laughs> I hope Suzanne is not listening to this. Uh, Gary, how about you? Statistically, she's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> don't say stuff like that. Don't pretend. Don't. We want to pretend like we have thousands oh, of listeners. Oh yeah, yeah. She's have absolutely listening 10. to this. Maybe I have no idea. <laughs> um, what about you, Gary? The movies that kind of terrify me are the ones that are sort of grounded in reality and talk about a dystopian future that um, is one that you know. You know, we as a society today would view it as something really, really bad, or even a dystopian past where you know things are just the the wheel of society has turned in such a way that it's really uh, bad for all the people within the society, and it's hard to change that. And the antagonist, the, the protagonist, really can't affect much change to it. Right, right. Uh, and and, and I, I would also, I'd have to agree with with most of you guys there that the fear of the unknown. Oh God, especially. I mean, and Neil, I can't agree with you enough that the movies that. You know, they make me like I'm watching it and I'm like, this isn't too bad. And then like it's a jump scare. and I'm like, whatever, that's fine. But mm. I think I see something out of the corner of my eye and I'll quickly like, turn on. I, I I'll admit it. I've been guilty to being so terrified of a film. I'll fucking I'll leave my door open and leave my bathroom light on. Yeah. So you know? the bad guys can and, get in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> my girlfriend hates it. But I just, you know, I'll 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 look up and then I'll take my phone, turn my flashlight on and point it to the corner. Obviously, there's nothing there. Um, so, yeah, those like the stalker type movies the the movies where you see like a silhouette of there's darkness in the corner but there's an even darker silhouette of some mm. figure standing there those are the ones that get me but i guess to be more specific for me it's the it's the demonic horror okay it's i think that was just growing up as a kid where i just had christianity and i grew up i grew up lutheran and just i was just so indoctrinated in that culture mm -hmm. and believing as a kid that if i did something wrong i would be dragged to hell when I passed away and, you know, torn apart by Satan's little helpers and stuff, limb from limb over and over again for eternity. It just scared the shit out of me. Okay. So anytime that I see like a demonic possession movie, you know, any, whether it's exorcist, even a, a, a shitty movie, like, you know, the exorcism of Emily Rose or something like that. Um, actually, I don't even think it's a shitty movie. I just know it gets a lot of knocks. Um, but things like, things like that for me, um, those ones are, that gives me the heebie jeebies at night. That's the kind of movies that, uh, like I was telling you that, that dream that I had that we almost, um, in fact, I was telling you and Neil about it when we were going over our ideas for short mm -hmm. stories. Um, I had this dream one time and I was like 27 or 28 or something. And I just, hello. I, I, yeah, exactly. I saw a friend of mine, but I couldn't see his face, but he was in the corner and he was talking to me. And then like in the dream, I closed my eyes and opened them and he was gone. And then I hear outside the front door, I hear hello, and I'm like, hello, and then I keep hearing hello, and it says, the voice says hello to me multiple times, but it keeps getting closer and closer mm -hmm. around the outside of the house. Finally, it's right next to my my bedroom window, which is next to my bed, and I hear hello, and I'm like, hello, and then it disappears for a minute, and then I hear a whisper coming from under my bed, hello, and I just, I fucking, I woke up, mm -hmm. grown ass man, and I, I, I got my pillow and my comforter and I came into the living room, turned both lamps on and the TV and attempted to fall asleep. I okay. Really just stared at sports center for like three hours. Okay. It scared the crap out of me. Well, so. I'm, I'm glad you survived that Johnny. Yeah, I know it was a terrifying experience. Was that was actually awful. me. I was screwing with you at night. <laughs> In my dream? Yes. <laughs> Fucking Freddy Krueger over here? Yeah, Jeez. buddy. Yeah, we, we don't care about your personal backstory, okay? Can you just go get another flat and don't come back? <laughs> well, then we can't yeah. have these wonderful, uh, this wonderful dialogue between us, Jacob, if I'm not here. Who are you going to banter with? Well, we, we, Myself, apparently. apparently. <laughs> okay, all right. So I'll, I'll banter. Okay. What, what, <laughs> yeah, what, he'll banter with me. What, what do you have to banter? Oh, uh, yeah. What, Thanks, Ian. Let, let's barter your banter. What do you got? Oh, Jack shit. That whatever, whatever you're really just whatever you love, I will destroy it. I will run it into the ground and tell you why your opinion sucks. Hell yeah, my I, man. I love Godzilla. 
Just give me a thing. So my love for Johnny, can you can you tarnish oh, him for a minute or two? Him. No, don't just run him into don't the ground. For that. I love him I so much. <laughs> I have one word for you. Gay. You kind of went up with your inflection, so I thought there was going to be more to that. I thought there was one, too. They are going to say one thing and then just say it, with, say it with no pause or beat yeah. in the sentence. Just try to string five words together. I don't know. Gay? <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy? I am Ron Burgundy? Oh, fuck yourself, San Diego. Oh, man. Um, this is backfiring on me so bad. <laughs> so we've, we've established a lot of... We, we've established a few genres, subgenres that, that would... F- fall into the classification of what is a terrifying film. Right. Um, so not to get into the, ex- I guess might as well get into yeah. the exact mm-hmm. spe- specifics of it. Um, so I guess starting, I'm sure everyone's kind of thought of it. I guess Ian, we'll go back and we'll start with you again and stuff. Um, can you give us one movie in particular? Um, it can be I- any film at this point. Uh, what's one movie in particular that you consider to be the most terrifying for you, you know, because of something that happened to you as a kid or just as an adult, whatever. Well, I want to say terrifying. Like, I, I came into this with a certain movie in sure, mind, but fine. I want to say it's... I mean, it, it, no, it is terrifying. What happens, the events of this movie, is a terrifying thing, mm-hmm. but that that's, it was actually more of a very shocking, horrific, uh, disturbing thing. It's, it's all of them, just all in one. Uh, that is the film called Found... Have any of you heard Found. of it? No, I don't think so. Uh, oh. F O U N D. The independent film. It's not very well known. A friend of mine, he bought it and he watched it and it, he uh, he shows me all movies all the time. Like we just get drunk and he just it's like you need to check out this <laughs> movie that you've never heard of before. And I'm like hell yeah! But he gave me this movie. He gave me the DVD and he said, "I'm not gonna watch this. You should take it home and, and watch it." And then, uh, so I did, and uh, I mean, I should have known by the fact that he uh, he didn't want to watch it with me. But so I watched it, and it just it destroyed my entire week. Jeez, why did why so? Yeah, why that? Okay, uh, so I mean, this goes straight into spoiler territory. Spoiler alert! But I mean, after I tell you this, you you'll definitely not want to watch it. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it is a good film. It's a very well-made film. Uh, everything, script, actors, director, everything is perfect. But it's just so fucked up. So, basically, it's a story of a kid in about middle school age or so. He finds out his brother is a serial killer. And uh, so, yeah, it's a serial killer mil- movie but from the perspective of his little brother who finds out what he's doing. Like, you don't see any of the killings. You, you don't hear about the killings. It's just this kid mm-hmm. who's just growing up. And then his brother's acting weird, and he's not sure why. And he, he, he finds this videotape that that he stole from the – that his brother stole from the blockbuster or whatever. He watches it, and it's just this uh, – I, I think it's uh, – ah, uh, shit. Um uh, – I forgot what it's called, but you know those movies that uh, snuff films. That's it. It's a it's a snuff film. Okay. Of this guy k- killing this woman and then skull fucking her at Blockbuster. And then this is half. <laughs> this is like more of a Hollywood video. <laughs> That's why there's only one of these stores left, by the way. I mean, it, it, it's not ne- <laughs> it's not necessarily Blockbuster. I just threw that name out, but it is a video <laughs> store. And it's like, yeah, what he's like, I want to know he, now. He k- kills her. He k- <laughs> Vulcan video. <laughs> he cuts her head off and the skull fucks her. And this is halfway through a movie. You're like, wow, this is insane. And so I texted my friend, like, what the fuck am I watching? He's like, oh, you have no idea yet. Yes. And so I, I can. <laughs> going, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> So that that's just that's just the movie that this kid watched, and so he finds out that his his bully at school ends up missing, and then he snoops in his brother's room and finds the head of his bully in a backpack, and he's like, "Oh, my my brother's a serial killer." Wow, this is interesting, but he doesn't say anything; he just lets it go. Mm-hmm. And then uh, fast forward to the very end of the movie. Um, his brother gets kicked out of the house, so he just goes crazy. So what he does is he ties his little brother to his bed 
gags him and he's just tied there and, the, and he says you need to stay right here. I won't hurt you, but you need to stay here. And then he proceeds to murder his parents. And and skull fucks them. <laughs> Jeez Louise. And so, but the thing <laughs> is, you don't see this. And the camera is focused on the kid, the main character, on his face. The camera is just in his face. And he's tied there. He's tied to the bed. He can't move. And he's just forced to listen to his brother murder his parents very violently. And so it, it gave me this this tension that I've never felt in a horror movie before, mm. where like you don't see what's going on, you you hear what's going on. You just you're stuck there with this kid who can't move. So it feels like you can't move. So it's very claustrophobic. And it just it, after I watched that, I was I don't even smoke, but I had to smoke a cigarette after that. <laughs> it was that good, huh? I, I just like I, I I went outside for a walk, and you know I was just I have to rethink my life. <laughs> exactly, I just contemplate and what I'm doing. My, yeah. It stuck with me, and it ruined my entire life, really. Entire week, yeah. Oh, no, no, I got over it. I mean, uh, as you can tell, my <laughs> way of getting over it is by one telling movie all I'm over it, but I'm talking about yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to tell everybody that I come across about this movie to make me feel better about it. Okay, so <laughs> I can't keep this in my one head. movie recommendation this week. It's found. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Not until the end, Gary. Oh, okay. Too early. Uh, Jacob, how about you? Uh, I'd probably, I mean, it might be kind of stereotypical, but it's okay. This mostly becomes a uh, personal uh, kind of ter- terrifying to me, but the uh, first paranormal activity. Okay. Uh, yeah. I thought I thought it did a really good job with its um, with not only just like its the way it's shot with uh, that found camera footage right. uh, perspective, but also its sound and everything. Um, but I grew up with uh, my dad had night terrors, so okay. I would. I would gradually like be scared awake in the middle of the night, like two or three o'clock, listening to my dad scream. Wow! Um, and screaming bloody murder, uh, might I add? Um, I think somebody dropped out. I don't know if we want to edit that real quick. Oh, man, they're back. Uh, but just listening to him either scream my name, scream my mom's name, or even his father's name in his sleep was always kind of terrifying to me. I mean, uh, anytime it happened, I immediately just grabbed a baseball bat and just kind of ran downstairs right. just in case, because you never know. Um, and so I don't know if you need to beat your dad or anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> parallel activity kind of hit me in a way I didn't expect. Sure. Um, Cause uh, I think this was, I, I didn't see the first one until around the time the second or third one came mm. out. And I was like, I thought they were just overhyped, kind of, you know, like the like the the big budget um, horror movies that everyone's going to talk about, and it's got just dumb jump scares, uh, but it actually doesn't have any substance behind it. And I mean, the acting in the movie is not good, but when the they go to sleep and the weird shit just starts happening, like their pillows being touched, blankets being pulled, um, the more terrifying parts are even when there's just completely dead silence, but then you just hear footsteps like slowly walking up the stairs uh, to, uh, but you don't see anybody on screen right. to suddenly running and just like that, that thump, 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 getting like closer and closer to your door. And just the sound design of that movie is like so so horrific in a lot of ways and then just the slamming of a door um I, it's like the last time i've been terrified by a movie specifically because of its sound um kind of reminds me of the uh, texas chainsaw remake that came out in 2003 uh the i think the trailer to that movie was more horrifying than the actual movies because like the teaser trailer to it was like it was completely it was just a black screen um, and you hear a woman screaming for bloody murder and she's running away from something. You don't know what, uh, but you're still not he- seeing anything, but you're hearing her pants and hide in a closet. And all of a sudden you just hear slow footsteps come up towards her screen, still completely black. But then you hear the cranking of the chainsaw over and over. And then finally it just starts and you hear the chainsaw just rip through whatever it is. And then it just still black, but then it comes down Texas chainsaw massacre. And it's like, when you can utilize sound in such a way that's like very visceral and very real, that terrifies me more than anything on screen possibly could. Yeah. Any jump scares. And I think, yeah. And so paranormal activity hit me in that way. Cause you have, uh, the characters like, uh, Micah, uh, like screen, like, and, and his wife, uh, let me get the names real quick. Uh, 
Katie and Micah and like the moments when Katie is possessed by a demon and she's slowly walking down the stairs, but the camera is still focused on Micah in bed. But all of a sudden you hear her scream his name at the top of her lungs like she's being murdered. And then Micah, it's, it's that fear of someone close to you that you love, like is begging for your help, pleading for your help that uh, and you're powerless to help them in a lot of ways. And in that case, like Micah couldn't help her at all because he doesn't have the chops to fight a demon. <laughs> um, and it's all it's all his fault in the end. But uh, there just the just that's that tension, that build up and then the, the just the quick like screams and uh, and call outs for uh, the people you love kind of terrifies me the most. OK, God. And, and you know what? I, I, I hate you for saying that because paranormal activity was was going to be my pick as well but i have a backup <laughs> that's okay that's what that's what i get for asking you to go first yeah um god uh okay so neil how about you so for me um my pick don't think falls onto a, into the classic you know horror oh, um, but a film that 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 i that resonates with me and sh and that i think was a very well-made film is the 2006 children of men okay mm. all right Good pick. Uh, you Excellent. know, pick. it looks into the future. It, the unknown, for some unknown reason, women are infertile. They can no longer bear children. And then miraculously, this one woman's pregnant. Now society adapted to the fact that civilization is ending, uh, that there was no hope for humanity. Now society was breaking down. And I just thought it did a really good job of showing um, – everybody's eventual of the fate of the humanity. But then there's that little gleam of light uh, mm -hmm. that is, that's being brought into the world. Yeah. Um, and I, I would say from that movie, the, the two scenes that stuck with me were uh, they had this one long scene when they're in the car and like they're fighting uh, these other people. And it was kind of an uncut scene. Uh, yeah. they, they're really stuck the with follow, me. But, the follow camera is yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And then the other one uh, was when they find the baby and there's like this bit pitched battle going on outside and they come out and everybody sees the baby and like they all stop fighting just to kind of look at it because it's, you know, the first baby that they've heard cry, you know, in, you know, 20 or so years or however long it happened in the movie. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think that that's uh, uh, a really interesting choice. And I, I can't remember if it was I don't I can't remember if it was Clive Owen or Chiwetel Ejiofor's yeah. character that had said they they like almost shed, shed a tear. They're like. That's the most beautiful sound I've ever heard mm -hmm. in my life because right. it's been as as you said and yeah I mean God that you're I mean yeah Neil that's a great pick I mean just the fact that humanity we're all still alive but we know that there is no future we know that there is nothing past because remember at the beginning I remember it's, it's so funny you bring that up I remember them they're celebrating mm -hmm. the youngest person in the world and that's the most famous person on earth this kid who's like they eight, turned eighteen or yeah, something 18 yeah or nineteen years old or something. Um, God, yeah, that was a good pick. Gary, what about you? Well, uh, you know, for me, I think the most terrifying kinds of movies, um, like, especially are like, Neil, you had a good one with a dystopian future, so I'm going to take another tact, um, are when there's people you trust and that trust is um, uh, used against you. So, um, like, movies like, um, you know, Fatal Attraction, we talked about last episode a little bit, or... Um, uh, uh, gone girl, um, you know, that's where cool. like there's somebody that's really close to you and they just kind of go crazy, go nuts on you. Um, cause I, I mean, I think, you know, one of my fears, um, is always to like, you know, if I'm, you know, sleeping next to somebody that like, they like mutilate my body in some way as I sleep. Um, so thankfully I don't have to worry about that too often. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean here? Uh, a little self-deprecating humor. Self-burn. <laughs> Self-burn, self-five. Hey <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm going to save some of my other, my other horror ones for later on. Um, it's it's good. I'm glad that we're, we're expanding to other areas outside yeah. of outside of horror as well. Yeah. Um, for me, it's going to ha it would probably have to be more a recent current trend with uh, Hotel Rwanda. OK, I would still have to say to this day is is one this what's terrifying to that it's it primarily honestly was that one scene um 
for those of you that haven't seen it, where Don Cheadle's character, they're, they just picked up supplies and they're driving back to the hotel and all of a sudden the road gets really bumpy. He's like, what the hell is going on? So he's he just really foggy and it's really foggy. Yeah. He just can't see anything. Yeah. So he steps outside and he's his footing is off mm-hmm. and he looks down and the fog starts to clear and you just see p- piles of yeah. dead corpses and the, the corpses are the street. They mm. are the foundation of the street. Right. That's what he was driving on. And it's just hundreds upon thousands of dead bodies and stuff. And the fact to me that, you know, we're very lucky, obviously, to live in in a, a first, uh, what you might call a first world country, you know, America, where we don't have to really face these types of travesties. And <laughs> unless the know, dystopian movies of the future come, come true, true come which is rather right terrifying. Good point. Um, but the fact that things like this have gone on for millennia, at this point, it just, it scares the hell out of me Mm -hmm. because, you know, those people that are laying there, that was someone's son, someone's wife, someone's daughter, someone's best friend, you know, they had a purpose for something and they're just, they're just killed for some mindless war that, you know, in, in this case it was, it was two tribes trying to find their footing between the 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 Tutsis and the Hutus. The Hutus. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, I mean, they're obviously, I, I think what was big about that for me was like, you see all the pictures of like the concentration camps yeah. f- from World War II and stuff like that. But it's just, it's just not as authentic and realistic looking as when you're seeing it in, I guess at the time was just HD. Um, if you're seeing it in high def on a big screen and you're seeing the reaction in real time of how these characters would have, would have been, had they actually been there in real life. And it just puts you in a different mindset. Um, so the fact that, you know, humans can be that cruel. I think that's what that's what terrified me the most. And, you know, still to this day, mm-hmm. 13 years later after seeing it, I still it still it makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Um, so I, I guess let's let's kind of let's flip direction. And for everybody that did, let's take the genre we all just said and let's pick something on the opposite genre really quick. Uh, OK. Um, all right. So for Neil, Gary and I, let's try to go more the horror okay. route. And for Jacob and Ian, let's try to go the, um, you know, the more realistic gender. children's movies. <laughs> children's, yes, exactly. Yeah. The Black Cauldron. That's, oh, that's perfect. one. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, Ian, how about how about you? What comes to mind? Oh man, I, I'm so glad you asked because I wanted to bring up this movie and I, I was perfect. Uh, I was hoping that I could talk about it. Uh, so I remember when I was six years old, my parents took me to see this movie, and uh, it, it, it was it was a happy movie. You know, it was uh, I didn't know anything about it. I was six years old, but it, it was a Steven Spielberg movie, so mm-hmm. you know it was great, and it had dinosaurs in it. And that's amazing. I love dinosaurs when I was six years old. You know, when, when you know, you ask your best friend in preschool, what's your favorite dinosaur? You know? Mm-hmm. So I was like, hell yeah, we're, we're going to go see dinosaurs. And it was Jurassic Park, of course. And so I was six years old. <laughs> what's your favorite dinosaur? Like, oh, man, I don't remember. I was six. That what was, was like, your favorite? How am I? Well, you don't have a three? current favorite dinosaur? What is wrong with you? How are you a human being? <laughs> <laughs> we can all agree that the Velociraptor is the superior. Yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah totally. Velociraptor. Until the T Rex totally. kicked its ass. Uh, the T Rex is oh, an overhyped chump. Actually, they found out hey, that T hey. Rex was just a scavenger. So, <laughs> right. That was he, didn't, he, discovery. he didn't want to be fed. He wanted to hunt. <laughs> but he was a scavenger. But I know. I'm quoting the movie. Yeah. Uh, that was okay. a movie from movies on this podcast, Jacob. Obviously, I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> These damn movies. But, These damn movies. <laughs> Maybe it's the but, movie uh, trying to come back uh, on. <laughs> yeah, like, anyway, so, I was, saying, so I, I was so happy that I was watching this movie, and it had the awesome soundtrack, and it had, you know, the awesome dinosaurs. You know, they go see the brontosaurus that's feeding off the tree, and it stomps down, and it shakes the cars, and everybody's like, oh, that's awesome. And then, oh, wait, what's going on? There's a storm, power's off, the lamb's mm. missing. Oh, shit. Now all this, this giant T-Rex just goes and just rips a guy out of a toilet. I am terrified. And the only- <laughs> you know, that scared the shit out of me when I was six years old. I, I, I like, my parents had to take me out of the It theater. still scares the shit out of me to this day. Yeah. 
It was very well made, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I would say that Steven Spielberg's probably the greatest director oh, of all time. Very... We're not getting into this again. Realistic, okay? Right okay? I mean, Gary's got a point. Thank you, I mean, he was. He was until 2000. Thank you, Jacob. Um, You're welcome, Johnny. We can agree yeah, on something. Jacob, I don't hate you as much now, oh, so we found oh, common ground. No. Let's just keep it rolling. Maybe we'll become friends at some point. I, I don't want that. Oh, okay. Okay. Never, I don't All want right that then. either. I don't know what, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, well, Jacob, what about you since we're already talking to you? <laughs> what kind of a thing is oh, that man. to say? <laughs> I'm a dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, oh, man, this is tough because uh, children. Oh, man. Uh, if I were to like sort of go the opposite spectrum of like horror movies. Right. I guess maybe like Brave Little Toaster as a kid. Oh my god! Oh, oh. that's actually a good <laughs> one. No, yes, that, that is. That is a the phenomenal choice. Well, and, and just the yeah, the thunderstorm, the fear of the, like the scene when the AC is struck by lightning right. and he dies. He commits suicide. Fucking terrified me as a kid. Yeah, yeah, no, God, no, yeah. Gary. He didn't. It's been forever since yeah. I've seen it. Then, he commits suicide. No, no, yes. I will. I okay. refuse. I refuse to believe that. No. And, and then the scene where Bl- oh, man, Blanky's I'll it. And the scene where Blanky's getting dragged into the the Blanky, fucking no. the fucking um, uh, sand uh, quicksand, and he's like, "I'm not afraid anymore." Yeah. What the fuck? It's so sad. And then, like the scene when they're yeah. in the fucking uh, uh, car crushing place, uh, the junkyard, and it's just like this that. is how all life ends. You know, it doesn't matter what you how, do. Have you seen this movie recently? Yeah. How do you oh remember all God, that detail? I've seen this movie so many fucking times. I could do a whole podcast. <laughs> Anyways, on this. Jacob, watch the Jacob. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's his favorite Kingdom Hearts no. world that oh. never won the games. <laughs> no on Crimson Tide and no on the Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> Uh, Jacob, why was it? Why, 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 why do you think that? Why would you pick that one? Just out of curiosity. Honestly, I just want Gary to talk for me about Brave Little oh Toaster God, so now. Because I mean, because <laughs> uh, as he's talking about that movie, all those scenes are coming back. Because I was just thinking of the AC, but then right. I'm thinking of when Toaster is like dangling over the sink yeah. in his dream. Like, the, I like the. I thought the, I still think the clown was cool looking, mm-hmm. but it was the fe- like the water coming towards mm-hmm. him that was scarier than the actual clown with the fire hose. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, blanking sinking in the sand. Well, how about the scene? Um, even the- even his mask almost getting crushed yeah. at the end and then Man. fucking the toaster has to jump into the gears and he just gets fucking ground to bits mangled I mean, man yeah. i mean that's a horrible scene so what a horrible way to go yeah uh, and then like he, he's fixed in the next scene okay so did oh fun fact for you the guy that wrote that story unsurprisingly enough did commit suicide in like 2000 yeah uh heck gary thanks yeah, no problem that's what i'm here for but he surely didn't go to Mars like the sequel did. <laughs> mm, <Yeah>. Nope, nope. <laughs> uh, okay, Brave Little Toaster's recommended movie oh, of the day. Sake. Oh, m- yes. moving on quickly. <laughs> Neil, <movie. laughs> yours. Uh, going the other way from Children of Men, more of a horror. Uh, it's also kind of a comedy, but uh, has anyone else here seen the 1988 Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Oh, yeah. Oh, hell oh, yeah. yeah. So as a kid, yeah. obviously, I had a fear of clowns. So I watched this movie, and I went to bed thinking that clowns were going to come in, wrap me up in cotton, <laughs> suck the blood out. <laughs> that is possible. A fear that I still have to this day. Mm, yeah, uh, Killer Clowns was a, it was definitely a B-rated movie, but it was a, It was memorable, though. It was a hell of a Absolutely. movie. <laughs> Gary, how about you? Uh, well, I mean, I think that if you're going to talk about like Brave Little Toaster is a really good one. Damn, I wish I'd have done that one. But um, if I'm going to go the you other way, go for you it. Seen another one <laughs> than the guy who recommended uh, it, I mean, so well, you might as well. Uh, so I'm going to uh, okay. I'd say Brave Little Toaster, uh, okay. or you could like really pick any like. 80s like labyrinth like that's a terrifying that a, movie the, the as a hands kid. in the oh, world oh, yeah. oh my god yeah. which is which is is a good one yeah, yeah. Um, the, a dark crystal yeah, a dark crystal um, is a fantastic one yeah. um and like you know oh, like, anything movie. like children's movies in the 80s were like the fucking jim shit, henson was man. a dark motherfucker can I we mean, just like, did, can we stop and just acknowledge that really quick and, jim henson was a dark motherfucker. <laughs> yeah he was oh my god like just anything from the a 80s mor- so was dr seuss a morbid man a, that's what I hear. Yep. So is Shel Silverstein. Yep. While we're at and it. most of uh, Don Bluth's Don Bluth's movies were pretty dark, like Land Before Time, and you know uh, yes. American Tales. Yeah. Uh, Land Before Time. That's a really sad movie. Just oh, right, right out of the gate. Mom. Oh, my God. God. Um, 
We need okay. to do a podcast on children's movies. Is, is everybody realized. really depressed? I think we moved from terrifying to depressing. We're all depressing. <laughs> We're all sad now. But as, ki- yeah. as kids, though, that kind of stuff, like, that that terrified us. You know? Yeah, like, and it sticks with you, shapes scary. your personality, really gives you a lot of complexes. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> it's good stuff. Thank you, brave little toaster. <laughs> good dick. Godspeed. Godspeed, son. Godspeed. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, a um, lot of a uh, lot of good, good, good content. I think uh, uh, in the break. So the brave little toaster. No, oh, for God's sake. Um, uh, go ahead, Johnny. Okay. okay, I was waiting to see if you had anything else. You seem to be going. I don't have on a lot more, but I'm not doing. It. <laughs> Please stop. Crimson Tide and Brave Little yep. Toaster. Yep, those are mine. Is going to have to be Crimson Tide. It's yeah. the most terrifying. No, I'm okay. Uh, um, God, it, it's hard, man. I mean, you know, I, I, so. You know that my f- infatuation with with James Wan is I pretty do, yes, well known, at yes. least at least with you. Um, I consider him to be the next this generation's Alfred Hitchcock kind of thing. Goes back to what Jacob was talking about, um, where he's able to masterfully, at le- with Insidious, it's really I mean it's a ghost story is the bottom line, but you know it's the first two thirds I thought were just masterfully done. Once they get into the um, oh god, what why am I forgetting the name of it? Um, I don't know, Johnny. I can't remember the name of it. Whatever the. Did you actually see this movie? No, I'm just making oh, it okay. up as I All go. Right, then. Um, but no, I mean, you know, between that and The Conjuring, it's <laughs> it's the sound editing and the soundtrack is always great. But it's the sound editing and it's the build up because what he does that's so amazing is he he'll take 15, 20 minutes to send you tiny hints that there is some unknown, you know, malicious entity that's around the corner. You don't know what it looks like but they'll minorly describe it and they'll send hints at it being in the mm-hmm. room, but you can't tell cause there's nothing there. You know, there's, there's a scene where they're like, it's over there in the corner and you look in the corner and it's just a dark corner. And there's obviously nothing there, not even a silhouette of something standing. Right. But finally out of nowhere, it's super quiet and you'll see the monster's face or you'll see the, the body of the demon or whatever. And it'll pop up with, you know, this really loud off, off key ring mm-hmm. or something like that. You know, so, some high, you know, violin uh, kind of in discordance or something. Right. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, so I, I, I really like that about his films. I just think he's, he's a, I just think in general, he's a master, but I, I, I can go on about yeah. him all day. I would have to say, um, the strangers, the strangers if you guys have ever seen that for me. Um, that was the first time I had ever seen a film use the, uh, use the antagonist or the villain in the background of the camera. So there's the shot of Liv Tyler, uh, where she's, looking for her cell phone and she's in the kitchen smoking a cigarette and she's looking around and you see a close up shot of her and then you can see the back hallway in the living room out of focus and then it goes back to a shot of her at the sink from behind her head and then it goes back to another the same exact shot but this time you can barely make out someone in a white mask standing in the living room about 20 feet away from her and it's it's out of focus and mm-hmm. it's a little bit distorted the picture itself but to I mean to this day I've seen that movie probably 20 or 30 times at this point. Right. And it just makes me jump every single time. I know it's coming, but it's still there. And you never see these people's faces. I think what scared the shit out of me so many times seen is because something like that could actually happen. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, it's a yeah, home invasion. Movies. Yeah. Home invasion movies, mm. stalkers, um, you know, and they just, they spend, and it's not a gory movie. You know, I'm not, I like, I like torture porn. I like the the torture porn type yeah, movies like and stuff. Kind of, so saw, yeah, yeah, Human Centipede, that kind of stuff. It's entertaining to watch. Just like, hey, let's watch this. We'll make fun of it. Blah blah blah. Um, that's great. But the movies that I find really scary are mm. the ones that draw you in Hitchcock style, James Wan yeah. style, um, and they get you with the subtle images. They get you with subtle, like Jacob, you were talking about the subtle sound effects, the build up over scenes, and it's not just cheap jump scares. They take time and effort to really draw you in and right when you think you're there and you think it's about to happen, it doesn't happen. And they hold you over the edge of the cliff for like mm. another five or 10 minutes. Right. And then finally drop you. Okay. Um, so let me ask you. And finally there's a yeah, Darth Maul demon. And then there's a Darth Maul demon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now just saying the, the, I think they ended up calling him the, the lipstick demon is actually what it was in the credits. Do you remember that at the end of insidious? I think they actually called him lipstick demon. I actually found the, the woman in the black dress would actually, if you saw the second one, spoiler alert, was just a serial killer who was a man. Um, I thought uh, his his silhouette inside the mirror was always the thing that freaked me out the uh-huh. most. Um, so anyways, l- let me, let me, let me pose a question to you guys. Um, in terms of like horror movies and what, not, not even horror movies, but just terror movies that make you scared and jump, yeah. what element to you do you think is the most critical 
to make that work? Are, do you think like it's the visual? Do you think it's the sound effects? Do you think it's pacing? I mean, which one of those, like, or any of the other ones, do you think really drives home that terror for you guys? I think, like I mentioned, mine is specifically sound. Yeah, uh-huh. um, like yeah, even same, just same with mine, somebody. Too. Yeah, so like even somebody just dropping a book on the ground or something like that will startle me and make me like turn around and be like, "What? Who? What the fuck yeah. was that?" Um, anytime anybody's like, even like even when I go home and my dad is very loud when it even comes to like washing the dishes, and so <laughs> I'll just hear him like slamming shit around, and I'm just like comp- always on edge that entire time. Um, so it's just like, man, it, just good sound hits me more than anything, uh, else really can. Okay. Sound. All right. Also a score too. Like, yeah, I, I, I th- if there's violins and stuff going on in the background, that's always terrifying. I think you have to be careful with the score though, because I think like, the score does help put you as the audience member in the mood for what, like what's going to happen and like helping you build up to it. But I think that using it too much can detract from the horror, like a real, a real subtle score for a horror film, I think really, really helps out with that. Yeah. Uh, Neil, how about you, Neil? I'd probably agree that the sound is probably the most, you can visually do lots of things, but without the sound, yeah, uh, it's not going to have the same effect. That's a, that's, a, that's a good point. I think the the most terrifying thing is what your imagination can create for you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just right. You never know Definitely. what it's going to come up with. It's, it, yeah, it's like what Ian was saying with the movie Found. He's like the little brother's like listening to his parents be murdered. You don't know how exactly his, his older brother's going about it. You just know it's in the most mm-hmm. horrific possible way yeah. that you can imagine as a viewer. And it's very claustrophobic too, because you see that he he's strapped down and he can't move. Mm-hmm. So that makes, and the camera's stuck on him. So like you feel like him, like you, you feel like you can't move anywhere. You're just, you're just trapped. So uh, kind of uh, reminds me of a little great film called Hereditary. No, uh, God. no, no. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, no. It's not but a great film. It's, it's a load of crap. Terrible, terrible and Ari Aster is overrated. It's a great movie. No, it's not. But, but uh, after uh, spoilers, after the daughter is uh, killed and the son is in complete shock, the claustrophobic camera settling on him and just on him alone uh. while um, he's alone in bed. Uh. And the camera keeps zooming in on him while you listen to his mother just go about her day. And she goes to the car and screams as she sees like her headless child's body. Right. Um, and the and there's the, the sun is still motionless, emotionless um, to the viewer as well. Yeah. Like that, that gets me a lot. I, I would, I, I, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go to, I'll go to my opinion. Like I, I will agree with you that, and I've said this before, that I, I thought the first two thirds of that film were well, actually yeah, were very, very well interesting. Done. Yeah. I really liked how they set it up. I thought they didn't give enough clue to what the curveball was, even though I understood it when it happened. I was just like, I I wish there was a little, like, one or two more little hints that this was going to happen instead of coming all the way out of left field. I thought it was a little much. Now, to that point, like you're talking about, I mean, (laughs) the the cinema, as far as the checklist goes, the cinematography, the sound editing, the Foley artist, whoever the Foley artist was, the person that does, like, I love how this just went into you critiquing uh, Hereditary. (laughs) (laughs) I think instead instead of just, like, like, commenting on that particular section you're like oh, let's talk about the entire movie real no, quick no, no no we're not gonna go into the entire movie i mean i i was saying i agree with you that i think that as far as scaring the shit out of me it absolutely scared the shit out of me i mean i, I think it was just it, it, mm. it legitimately did scare the crap out of me for sure. i will agree with you on that so uh, i haven't seen the movie found which is the one you were talking about before that in terms of like um mm-hmm. just staying tight on uh, the the younger brother did the camera did it zoom in slowly or was it sort of just a locked camera? No, it's it stuck on his face. Like just as pretty much the, the director just put the camera like on top of his body pretty much. Okay. Uh, well, except for sometimes it showed, so he's in his room, right? Mm-hmm. And sometimes it showed the opposite of where he was. It showed him look like his point of view, looking at the door, his bedroom door, which is open. And they're being murdered outside in the hallway. So mm. uh, still outside of his view. So it's, it's like it's right there, but you can't see it. Okay. 
So I, I guess, you know, I, I, I noticed everybody was saying that it seems to be a general consensus amongst us that, you know, s- sound or audio editing, Foley composition and stuff, that seems to be the biggest driving factor for us in horror. And I thought it was interesting that you brought up pacing. Yeah. So I, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and kind of kind of agree that, that pacing with, with editing and the structure of the script, for me, actually plays the largest the largest right. part the, what makes it the scariest for me. yeah and i would say pacing as well because it, the build-up is so key in a horror movie right um and i think a lot of horror directors kind of to use the euphemism blow their load at the start of the movie <laughs> to to really just make it like to grip people but i think the really really compelling ones um don't you know, they, they save that and they build up to what, like, the ultimate thing is. Because if you start off, right. like, at a, you know, a 10, you can't really go up There's from no there. Yeah. yeah. But if you start off really, really subtle and, like, slowly mount and mount and build that, um, that horror, I think that's where um, you really can kind of get into the character and get terrified by it. Yeah, because so, let me ask, let me pose a question to you guys. Do you think it's scarier in a horror film where they have a bunch of, quick jump cuts where every shot every frame only is only up on is only up on the film for two seconds or something Mm -hmm. or do you think it's scarier where it's the same exact shot for an elongated period of time oh same exact shot same same exact shot for me same and that's the same for me too yeah for the most part but i mean it it can be done well the other way It, it, it can it can i don't I don't, I'm, but not very that. often, sure. of course. Yeah. I, I, I will say... Definitely not very often. I, I did like the um, the filming style in um, uh, the one with the Babadook. Babadook. Bob- yeah. It was just yeah. the Babadook. It was just yeah. Babadook. Yeah. Where, Same where, thing. Where it's kind of like, um, like it'll... like jump real fast and then like like it just makes really jerky kind of movement like how yeah. like a fly moves i i think that's really kind of neat and terrifying in, in, if used properly pov from the monster is is what what you're referring to for that because it was the babadook that was uh, flying yeah. around and no no like when like they're looking at the babadook and like kind of moves up like real oh, fast the, yeah. the stop animation that yeah. they're using yeah. for the yeah, yeah when it's like a cockroach yeah yeah, yeah. um did you know? Oh th- uh, yeah, yeah, stop animation freaks stop people. Stop animation out. does freak, and no, nobody uses it anymore. Yeah, nobody uses it. Wait. Yeah, yeah there, like there's that, a man. Alice in Wonderland movie. Oh, the Tim Burton. I think the film in the '80s or something. Uh-huh. No, uh, it, it's <laughs> Tim Burton. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it's filmed in the 80s. It's completely stop animation except for Alice. Mm. Alice uh-huh. is the only person, the only actress. So she's only like seven years old. But oh, everything else, awesome. the, the rabbit, the Mad Hatter, the Queen of Hearts, all of them, every single character is all stop, like uh, puppets mm. being stop animated. And they're moving on their own. Let's just imagine all these puppets just moving by themselves and stuff. Okay. And it is very freaky. And, and the the white rabbit, uh, he has a ho- he's he's a stuffed animal, and he has a hole in his stomach, <laughs> and his stuffing continually falls out. What? And he grabs a spoon and it eats it back up again. I think we're gonna have to watch this. And just, and just hold it together with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I just for, I completely forgot about that until you all start talking about. What's, stop what's, I'm sorry. What's it called I, again, really quick? Which which else is it? Just Alice in Wonderland and Alice. It's just Alice. Alice. Okay. Still Alice. Okay. No, no, not, no. not the Julianne Moore. Oh, no, okay. no, 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 Gary. Gosh. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I will say that I do not like <laughs> jump scares, and I think yeah. like in horror movies, I get why they do them because that's an easy scare to do to people, but. It's more like you're startling people rather than actually scaring them because it's just the human reaction when something like jumps out really loud in your face that you're like, oh, but it's not really like that's not terror so much. The terror is like when you know that's going to happen. Um, What do you guys think about jump scares? Yeah, um, I I completely agree with you 100 percent. But there is one movie that actually pulled it off very well. By how well it was done, and that was The Conjuring. The Conjuring had a good amount of jump scares in it, but I still think it stayed true to what James Wan tries to put into mm. every one of his pieces. Yeah, is is that it is that elongated shot? It is that buildup of the tension. But yeah, no, he he did, and even in, in Insidious, I, I brought up, and the first Saw, same thing. Like, you know, he he did it in all of them. Um, but that that's a good point. Yeah, but I I mean one one scene in particular, the that clapping scene. Yes. Oh my God. Want to play hide and clap? Yeah, Stop it, Gary. 
Oh my god, still to this uh, day. Yeah, because that that actually was. Uh, clap. That was actually that that was because then they built it up. Right. Just the way they built it up, like it it wasn't. I mean, it was a jump scare. It was no, you're right. But it was it was so well put together. It was a it was a brilliant way to go about it. I mm-hmm. still to this. I mean, still to this day, that that scene where she's playing hide and clap the mother and that the the mm-hmm. dresser opens and you just she's like clap clap yeah. once and then you see the hands just mm-hmm. come out and clap and, yeah so. but i mean like jump scares have gotten so like overused like it like in the movie um the gift which was about like some neighbors and the, like <laughs> jason who, bateman and uh uh the guy with the kind name? of like his face is like got a lot of character to it i can't remember his name <laughs> you're saying he's ugly uh no but like <laughs> okay. anyway like it, that movie, I remember seeing it, and there's like this part when they're looking out like the the sliding glass door, right. and it's building to a jump scare with the music because the violins are going faster and faster, and nothing happens. And I mean, like that to me just says jump scares have gotten to a point where they're so overused that you have to fake a jump scare, you know, to right. make them scary or something. Yeah, and I think it worked. It worked pretty well. I mean, I think we can all agree for a lot of films in the 70s and 80s and 90s, like slasher films. I mean, they they primarily rely on a lot of jump scares, but back then it was it was new, mm-hmm. it was entertaining, you know, it still it still worked. Um, I don't necessarily think I you hate know, movies like that. Well, I think in particular, just like the um, original appearance of the xenomorph in right. Alien, uh, when oh, Dallas yeah. is crawling through the vents in particular, uh, just the build-up to that scene and the tension of Dallas crawling through the vents, the motion tracker is following both him and the xenomorph. And then when finally Dallas turns around, you have that epic moment where the xenomorph is like reaching out to him with its arms wide open, but you hear it scream and the music crescendoing at that moment. And that I think that's a perfect jump scare. Um, because it was building to it and it actually paid it off in a, in a right way. But when like uh, what Gary was talking about with uh, like these fake outs that that they've been doing lately and they sometimes in uh, like horror movies lately, they do them so early, like uh, like one of the last paranormal activity movies. Like they try to make, like they did a hide and seek scene within like the first like five minutes of one character, like chasing another (laughs) one and then try to build up that, there there's something evil going to pop out of the closet that they're hiding in but we know it's just the kid yeah but they still like make it a jump scare anyways and it's like i don't that's dumb why are you doing that <laughs> yeah usually it's like uh, there's a cat it turns it, like nine times out of ten it just turns out that there's a yeah. cat yeah, it's just it's so bad now <laughs> neil what do you think about jump scares? Uh, you know uh, fr- uh i saw friday the 13th part two did a mm-hmm. uh, a jump scare very well that it really impressed me. I'm a fan of all the Friday the 13th movies. Mm-hmm. Sure. Hey, the um, movies, I mean, yeah. what's your favorite? We got, we got to know what your favorite is. Seven. Seven. What? Really? Interesting. Really? I mean, six, I, six is mine. Jason lives is mine. Is seven. The one where he's like yeah. the actual demon. Yeah. Well, the beginning of Jason lives is amazing. Uh, and the end of seven is, Seven's a new beginning, right? That's with uh, no, the girl blood. who has the psychic new powers. Blood. New blood, yes. Yeah, but yeah, she psychic, has the psychic psychic powers. powers. And that part is kind of dumb, but I, I like the... Uh, well, you know, I'll, I'll bring up this kill. This isn't what I was going to talk about in part two, but there is a kill that uh, is goes very great for this conversation. Seven, where the girl, she's running. And, I mean, it's, you know, it's the typical thing where she's running, he's just walking. But it does build up tension. So she's running, she's running, and there's oh shit, she slips and falls, and then Jace is right there. But then she gets back up again, and she's running, and she comes across this uh, the shed or something, and she can't get the door open because she's a woman in a horror film. So of course she can't get the door open. <laughs> so uh, she she's just struggling with the door, and Jason's just walking after her, and then she finally gets it open, she closes the door, and then. Bam! Right there, Jason opens the door, and there's like this shriek sound. And you're watching, you're like, "Oh shit, he's right there!" Yeah. The- and then, um, and then she's hiding behind a wall in another room, and he's just—you can see through the cracks in the door. Jason is just kind of looking for her, and uh, and then she thinks she finally gets away, and then suddenly his arms just come out through the oh, side. The and just... Yeah. The uh, video game yeah. is also really well dark. through the wall. He goes through the wall. To, and then cuts her throat. <clears throat> but um, yeah, that that's one of my favorite parts of Seven. But in part two, there's um, there, there's a part where the girl there she she's running and you hear this 
score, like I mentioned earlier, there's the score that's playing with violins and it's, it's really streaking. It's, you know that Jason's nearby, and but she's running, she's trying to hide. And then you think that it's all, uh, like you think she's about to die, but then she doesn't. And then the, the music, the score stops. And then all of a sudden it's quiet and she made it, she survived. And then bam, Jason it shows up right right there and just kills her. Like completely out of the expectation. Cause you're expecting him to come during the violins and stuff going on, but he doesn't. Mm -hmm. And then, so you're, you like, you're okay. That's calm. And then bam, he shows up. Yeah. And toying with audience expectations is, uh, especially yeah. which, which as, yeah, as you were saying earlier, you know, they're, they're doing that too much now. Like that's definitely overdone now mm -hmm. and lame, but I mean, this was, I think 1981, when they filmed that, I mean, this is one yeah. of the first times they've ever done that, and it was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they are how they're going to be able to like reinvent Jason and Freddy for like the our, the newest generation. I hope yeah, they don't. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, watch the I, I still want I want more Nightmare on Elm Street real bad, but I think it could work better as like a TV series or something than actual films. Um, but it makes me kind of hopeful if you get like the right directors and writers behind it, then we could actually see For those sure. characters be scary again because they haven't been scary in like 20, 30 years. But what do you, what do you do to what do you do to reinvent something that's already been played over and over again? I mean, I mean, what, what I mean it's do? tough. You know, I mean, uh, you've already you've already pl you've already yeah. played that song for you know three mm -hmm. four decades successfully. We're now into the what the the fourth fifth decade at this yeah. point for those types of movies like what do you do that's new like i don't know i think that's those it would be cool to see that but i think something like that honestly is on its way out the door whether it be freddie whether it be jason you know whether it be uh, michael myers you know it's 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 gone that that time is over i don't know if there's really going to be a reinvention of it because that's just not the way horror is mean, you'd be surprised. uh we just had it chapters one and two we did, we did. And those are basically Nightmare on Elm Street films, if you really look at them. Uh, and I think that uh, when, like, VR becomes more uh, possible for movies, like, it's going to be that's absolutely terrifying to wear a VR headset and watch a movie that's a horror movie mm -hmm. and, like, be looking around and, like, wherever you look is where the camera looks. That's going to be... And yeah. set, like, can you imagine playing Dead Space with a VR headset? Like, you'd kill yourself, you know. Be red. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I have a VR headset, and I, I've tr there. I actually did like a little it, little kind of just a little short thing, uh -huh. and I mean, yeah, exact. You're exactly right. It, it it can be pretty scary with wherever you look is where the camera looks. Because mm -hmm. I've tried that, and yeah. You're absolutely correct. That 4D style of interaction is, I mean, that's that's really, that's the not only the future of, of where film is going to go to an extent, but it's the future of entertainment as yeah. as we know it. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I guess mo moving forward past that, you know, we've talked about a lot of different genres and subgenres, and I'm really glad we've, we've dove into the majority of these head first. Um, what would you guys say is your favorite decade for for horror or terrifying movies, movies that really okay. made you cringe. What do you, what would you guys say is your, is your favorite decade? Just kind of a quick list. Uh, Neil, how about you? Eighties. Mm, that's a good pick. That's, yeah, that's my pick. Who, who, so I guess from, from the eighties, what, what would you say are like the top three or four films that even to this day, you're just like, Jesus Christ, as a, a guy in my thirties, you know, like I still, Mm -hmm. I'm still huddling under my blanket. You know, like what really from the 80s kind of made you, what would make you pick that decade in particular? I mean, it's the top three, the classics, Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Halloween. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Brave Little Toaster. Think... <laughs> yeah, that was, that was <laughs> fun. Or was that 89? I mean, I can still count. It still counts at the end of the decade. <laughs> Jacob, what about you? Uh, I think more of the body horror type stuff from the 80s, like okay. anything Cronenberg. Um, Hell yeah! Still holds up really well for me because uh, body horror is pretty terrifying in itself. Just like the fear of your body losing control and turning into something that you don't want it to, uh -huh. or you know, like uh, the fly in itself is about aging and uh, degener dege degenerative diseases. Um, and even <laughs> the John Carpenter's The Thing is still one of the like is a masterpiece of horror. Um, uh, 
uh, even Creep Show Two freaked me out as a kid. Uh, specifically, the raft, uh-huh. where I don't know if anybody remembers Creep Show Two and the raft, but like these kids go out into the middle of a lake and they're on a barge or a raft because it's called a raft. Uh, but there's like a black oil slick that keeps creeping closer and closer to them. And suddenly like the oil slick kind of like has a mind of its own and starts to grab some of the teenagers and actually eats them alive. Like you watch their skin like be peeled back by the oil slick and their bodies just like melting inside of it. Kind of like the eighties blob. I love the the blob remake from the Mm -hmm. eighties, but the raft actually kind of subverted my expectations as a kid because it kills, um, uh, like basically one of the last two characters is basically the uh, main character is a kid, like a uh, male main character. And then the girl that he's kind of pining after. And so you think, Oh, th- they'll both survive. Cause it's his main love interest. But as a, that's what I expected as a kid. But then all of a sudden, like one morning, uh, while they're stranded on that raft, uh, he wakes up and he's fine, but then he kind of hears her moan and he's like, what the hell? And he like, T- like turns her like face away from the bottom of the raft and you just see the oil slick has been slowly like eating her face for like the past couple hours or so and she just screams bloody murder and sh- he watches as she's pulled in by the oil slick into the river in a gory fashion it's really fucked up but <laughs> body horror stuff like that really uh kind of still mess with me in some ways mm-hmm. that no other horror can okay Very nice. uh, ian how about you i completely agree with everything that everybody's been saying so far yeah, like the body horror, like uh, Cronenberg for sure. Video drum was very unsettling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the fly, fly is still fly, fly yeah. is to this day. Yeah. That's... Uh, so yeah, eighties pretty much. Now, there's also some good nineties ones too. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there's. Um, also, I'm really I'm a big fan of the cheap movies. I mean, <laughs> of course I'm because I have the b- movie so bad the good. Yeah, who would have Facebook thought? group and podcast movie so great. But... <laughs> fucking awful. Oh yeah. Movies so mediocre they're, eh. they're yeah. Mm. Like, <laughs> but like for example, I'm I'm a big fan of Evil Dead. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, uh, because you know it's well, like the first one is definitely legit, but it's just so cheap and, and cheesy and stuff. But, but it's really fun. Then the second one, they just ramped up that cheesiness, they really did. and I, I, I yeah, love it's it. Like, it's like great. Like well, basically one of the first horror comedies mm. in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, they did the same movie again, but funnier. Yeah. But better. Yeah, so way better. I <laughs> Actually, I prefer the first one over the second one. Like, it took a long time to make that happen because the second one was just so funny. But the first one actually has some... I mean, it, it's more serious, I guess. Got that tree rape. Funny tree rape! <laughs> Rated TR for but, tree uh, rape. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, Gary, how about you? Uh, I would say for myself, probably the 70s. Um, okay. The 80s had a lot of great movies. Uh, not not doubting that for the, the, th- the horror thriller genre. But I like the 70s, I think, because things were more gritty in terms of like, you know, the, the film quality and the, you know, the, 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 there wasn't the... Uh, level of special effects so it just it seemed all just dirtier and like you know grindier to me so uh you know the 70s i think uh you know has it for me okay i i would have to say for myself a little on the opposite end of the spectrum for, for me honestly i hated the 2000s mm-hmm. for pretty much every genre really? with the exception of horror or fantasy Honest, or, or or fantasy yeah. exactly no i mean for me you that decade was really, it was taken away from the trend of the body horror and the slashers and, and stuff like that. And it's, it started coming out with, it started using um, f- uh, media as a medium for, and so you look at like The Ring, you know, as, as a kid, as a kid, and granted, I... Blair Witch Project. Uh, and Blair, yeah, see, Blair Witch Project would started all of it, for sure, absolutely, you know, I... Or maybe Scream, you know, um, that was kind of like... But Scream was the 90s, that's, yeah. that's, that's still slasher for me, so... I, for me, I was in my teens, and that's oh. when I really started to get into horror films from the ages of 12 to, you know, 19, 20. Mm-hmm. I, re- I just watched them religiously, you know. But uh, The Ring and Saw, dude. I mean, I had never in my life, I at the time at least, I had never seen a movie like that. I had never seen... You've never seen Saw? I, I've seen Saw now. Okay. Do I you, see Saw? Yeah. Okay. You, okay. All the time. A lot of topics. Um, 
but you know that was also Love that sauce. was also <laughs> that was also the start of the zombie trend. Like when when it was pure, you know, like when Twenty Eight Days Later came out, um, you know, it, in it, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead, Dead, which was better than the original. I'm gonna say it; it was better than the original. I do I like love the, the I remake. I think that's uh, I still think that's Zack Snyder's best movie. It, it, it is his best movie, absolutely. I totally agree with you. Um, you know, there there was all, and then you also had uh, like the others that mm-hmm. that one that one freaked me out. Um, you ha- if anybody had seen Pan's Labyrinth, that was our f- that was my first foray into yeah. foreign horror films, right? And okay. and you really that may not even be a horror film. You might be able to just say, yeah, that's fantasy. You know, just a dark fantasy. Yeah, and uh, dark fantasy. Yeah, and I to this day still fucking love that movie. Um, you know, I mean, I, technically, Human Centipede came out in the 2010s. Um, there's also American Psycho. You know, if you want to just talk about terrifying, mm-hmm. you want to talk about from last episode, Man yeah. versus Self, one of the what I, I know I said I didn't like that genre as much, but it's one of the best man versus self scripts uh-huh. ever made. It's just like to this day I still don't know was did Patrick Baby kill all those people or didn't he? And it's it's, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Who knows? Um, yeah, no. For me, for me, it was the 2000s hands down, just because there was such an large eclectic taste mm-hmm. of new types of films, and there were new subgenres being created right then. And also, it's the nostalgia factor. I guess. Okay. All right. All right then. I'd- how do you all feel about Gorefest? I'm not a big fan of Gorefest. Uh, really? it, yeah, I mean, it's usually just uh, done for the stomach churning effect of it. And I don't think most times when it's used, they uh, they use it for telling. Shock. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just a gimmick. But those, I mean, those, I mean, technically Evil Dead was was part of that Gorefest I think a little yeah, bit. But that, that, oh, that yeah, but like, that was like gore fest with taste yeah. and sure. cheekiness yeah. to it. But the Saw series um, was the same thing. You have like, like, yeah, but like that kind of like with Saw, it progressed as the movies kept getting worse. Mm-hmm. I still think the first two Saws are like just excellent psychological thrillers while the rest just became torture porn. Oh, yeah. I hated the second one, but yeah, um, yeah. one and three, I agree. And I, I, don't, I don't really mean torture porn. I mean just movies with just a ton of blood yeah yeah so yeah. like yes i i like, love sometimes like, be really fun. I, I like a lot of them yeah like friday the 13th yeah. and nightmare on elm street and stuff i love like uh i don't yeah. know if you've seen deathgasm that came out a couple years ago that movie no, is awesome. heard about no. it. sounds sounds pretty good though i mean like a, Ser- a serbian film that one's always talked about as just it's just yeah. so <laughs> atrociously right. brutal mm-hmm. that you just can't help but watch it. You know, if you guys ever, there's a Eli Roth did one, um, Green Inferno, mm-hmm. about a, a group of tourists that get, uh, they're traveling in the Amazon and they get trapped by a tribe of cannibals. Right. And it's literally, I mean, just people getting their tongues cut out and it, it's it's just, I don't know, it's just entertaining it's real bad it's really bad he's bad eli roth is bad eli roth is bad i don't i don't i really don't cancel him <laughs> now tim roth is awesome tim roth is awesome and also yes. <laughs> yeah, he is great tim roth is great no but he's eli roth's brother no he's not okay There's he's no not no that may not be true <laughs> i have not, not fact checked that <laughs> oh my god oh man you know, a really good one is uh, I brought this up last time actually, but it's definitely worth bringing back up again. Is uh, Dead Alive, aka Brain. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, that, Jackson's that movie, first movie. Yeah, no, it's third We're movie. Not actually. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, if you watch that, you'd have no idea. Like, you wouldn't believe that you're watching a Peter Jackson film, unless you've seen his first two movies, mm-hmm. which are equally as bizarre. But I mean, you, you're like, this is the guy who made Lord of the Rings. It's, it's insane <laughs> the same because <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it's absolutely insane. Uh, and, I, that's and, how yeah, I feel when I watch Frighteners as well. I'm just like, that's, yeah. that's still Peter Jackson. Jesus. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's absolutely insane. As like everything about the camera angles, the uh, but the but anyway, Dead Alive has so much gore, mm-hmm. and it, it's it's got the most fake blood in any movie ever made. I think it's on a record. For I, that. I, I think I remember you but, telling us. Yeah. About, I think you and I were talking about that the other week. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's just like there, there's just an orgy of just zombies. <laughs> I mean, I mean that both figuratively and literally. <laughs> Fantastic. B- bucket, buckets <laughs> of stage blood. <laughs> Super yeah, and other fluids. Yeah. All right, guys. But the effects I mean, just keep getting cooler and cooler too. Like the his mother's like final form at the end was oh yeah, just definitely. so awesome. 
Yeah, absolutely. Cool. All right, guys. Well, unfor- it, it, it's un- un- unfortunately, that oh, it, it's sorry. all right. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. Um, don't you worry. We will be back yes, sooner indeed. rather than later with another episode on uh, horror movies and just the industry itself because there's so much, so much, so to, much talk to talk about. about so much, that, so much, so much that we can't contain in an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so before we go through, I, I, I do really want to go ahead and get a recommendation of it, it doesn't have to be a horror film, but some terrifying movie from uh, from Ian Jacob and Neil before we we get off here. Um, so, Neil, if you had a recommendation for our viewers to take a watch this week, uh, what would you throw their way? Uh, I think uh, if you're looking for a different kind of horror, uh, 2012, uh, The Cabin in the Woods, I think is a really that's good. A great, okay, yeah, yeah, that's an interesting Excellent. one. That's a great pick. Excellent choice. Yeah, and Jacob, how about you? Uh, not movie wise, but also down the uh, shutter hole. Sure. Uh, the television show uh, Channel Zero, mm-hmm. which is kind of an anthology series. Uh, each se- each season is kind of different. I only just started it, but I think the first season is pretty excellent so far. Uh, it's kind of more subtle creeps than anything else. Like you'll have uh, ca- like cameras focused on the characters looking off in the distance, but you don't know what they're looking at. And when it does actually show you what it, what they're looking at, it is kind of creepy. Like I even had a buddy come over. And there's a part where they actually do show what like what a character is looking at off screen. And he fucking pulled the blanket up to his face uh, <laughs> as it was going. So I was like, win. Um, but it's it's really good. And its characters are pretty well developed uh, aside from a few. And it's got like genuine mystery to it that I kind of miss. Uh, it's been a while. Like I, I feel like the last time I had it was that first season of True Detective where I just felt like either like both completely lost and just infatuated with how the mystery is unfolding. And that's how I feel with this show as well. Oh. And that's uh, channel zero and I'm watching it on uh, shutter channel zero on shutter. On shutter. You, you've been talking about it for the last couple episodes. Shutter it is intriguing. Um, Ian, how about you? Uh, also not a movie, uh, a TV show, a very this particular episode of a TV show of black mirror. Okay. Which one? Uh, Playtest is Playtest. the first, ep- no, the second episode of season three. I did not get to season three. I got to the middle of season two, I think I stopped watching, but okay. When I he got watch. to the pig. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the entire, the the entire thing is very, <laughs> the entire, the entire show is, is very disturbing. Mm, yes. But, A lot of episodes, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but this one in particular is about horror tropes. Mm-hmm. And whatnot. It's it's a guy. He he d- takes a play test. Uh, he he tests a video like a VR game that goes inside your head. So basically, he's kind of hallucinating in a video game, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he's put in this haunted mansion where all of his fears come to life. Sounds lovely. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he actually he, he was like sign me up. That sounds amazing. It's like H. P. Lovecraft. <laughs> Age before beauty. Yes. And so, yeah. So I mean, it starts out with jump scares, and he's like, "Ah, you're not fooling." Yeah, jump scares. Yeah, that's so dumb. But then it turns into the psychological shit, and it, it turns into he... Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Jesus, <laughs> that would be amazing. No. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but he he completely loses his entire sense of reality. Okay. And it's as do most it's people. Absolutely terrifying. As do most people in every episode of yes. Black Mirror. Yes. But okay, I, I, I'll I'll give season three another chance, and then I'll check that one out just because you recommended it. Yeah. Um, episode two. Episode two. Season episode, three. Season three. Uh, okay, guys. So uh, once again, we do want to thank uh, Ian Webb here from the pot. Check their, his podcast out, uh, "Movies So Bad They're Good," and join the Facebook group, which is now at almost twenty five thousand strong, Woo-woo. with a very young, only a few months old at this point. Um, uh, it's over a year. Over a year. Okay, maybe it's just I joined a few months ago. Um, <laughs> you only look a few months old. With, uh, with that group uh, is "Movies So Bad They're Good," "Midnight Cult Classics," and "Camp." Jump on. They've always got uh, really cool watch parties going live uh, with some of the worst movies ever made. And you can comment and make new friends and talk with people that enjoy the same movies as you. Um, also, check out uh, Jacob Johnson's podcast, uh, Reese and Jacob vs. Evil. Uh, and uh, for Leadfeather Productions, all of us here, Neil, myself, and Gary, uh, thanks for tuning in. And from everybody here at I Don't Give a Flick, I'm Johnny Blackburn. And I'm Gary Elmore. Stay classy.